Fine. So very good day to everybody once again. This is uh, Transport Logistics Systems and in today's class we discuss about packing and palletization about IFT, International Freight Transportation, okay, about the logistic platforms, vehicles and containment, okay. So this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at drdrkristoran at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers, right. So in this class we discuss about palletization, what are its advantages, when did palletization actually begin, so what is the history, okay, so how to palletize the goods properly, what is the stability of the pallet structure, we will identify which is the correct one and which are the wrong ones, okay. Then we will understand how palletizing the loads will allow for preloads in the accumulation areas or maybe in the temporary buffers and what are the opportunities especially for you know the digital players in the transport and logistics industry then we'll understand the digital solutions for maritime transport what are who are the digital challenges and how online platforms is going to offer you know better end-to-end -end solutions finally we are going to end this class with the future of the digital logistics platform so i've already given the assignment in the google classroom please complete them as soon as possible so at regular intervals i'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics right mm -hmm. so this is palletization it's a logistics process where you try to place the goods together on the top of the pallet okay so you try to consolidate the load which can make it much more easier for the handling equipment to actually transport the goods so the pallet it's nothing but the horizontal platform which is formed by the boats okay so that is going to provide a base for the products so that you can use the forks of maybe a forklift or maybe a pallet jack can actually pick them and then move the load as a complete whole thing okay so in addition to this you know the facilitating transportation palletization is all about how you try to protect the merchandise so from the start of the palletization to the destination how you try to maintain the product in the perfect condition is all about how you take the entire logistic process to reach the end customer okay so the basic objective is to provide goods with stability and how you are going to choose the type of the pallet is very very important or maybe fundamental okay so you not only have to consider the material which is made of like wood or maybe plastic or maybe metal okay but also the measurements especially with GMA grocery manufacturer association pallets half pallets and the most popular one euro pallets okay so there are like a, some design or maybe some characteristics which the pallet will depend on okay so you know the type of the pallet depends on the storage systems that is going to make the entire warehouse okay then you have handling equipment like manual or maybe automatic okay what is the type of the product which is actually stored and who are the various suppliers of the company okay. and with the you know pallet you have to establish it as a standard unit load for the warehousing especially because like uh, more efficient goods loading and unloading takes place that's how the pallet will enable the operators or maybe automated loading ducts so that can insert and of course remove the freight uh, into or maybe from the trucks in a more easier way okay so this is the reason why handling equipment can stack the products and maybe you can reduce the uh, you know, transportation or maybe reduce the number of movements and of course like uh, streamlined goods you know flows through the in the installation procedure where we will have products uh, piled atop pallets so that can be easily moved like within or maybe around the warehouse so that is going to ensure every item will be reaching to the stage to which it is being assigned whenever it is being required okay so there is much more dedicated improved safety for the products and of course the operators this is where the pallets will prevent the workers from having to move the loads individually so that we are minimizing so even it is going to increase the safety for both the goods as well as employees so we'll have some advantages uh, even like uh, we'll have inventory control okay so palletizing goods is all about how you try to you know mon uh, make the monitoring procedure even more strict enough for each of the stock keeping unit okay so since the logistics manager will know 
okay the entire volume of the merchandise that is actually stored on each of the wallet they can get an idea about the stock level of the product okay then optimization of storage space so when you talk about pallets it's all about stackability okay so the various storage systems may either it is manual or maybe automatic as i told you okay make the most of the warehousing surface area so everything has its own pluses and then minus so this is the you know the diagram of the pallet how it will look like okay so this is the history of pallet like uh, it's considered as the supply chain revolution back from the 20th century okay so faced with you know increasingly heavier products okay at the beginning like 1920s we had extremely heavier products so that has been transported so u.s businesses began using wooden skits or maybe precursors okay so that is used for the pallet in order to streamline the goods and maybe to flow in the procedures as well but the pallet concept was actually developed in the military field from then only like 1950 1920 only it evolved and after that now it is major used in the military field okay. so it has been during the world war second second world war between 1939 to 1945 that the armies would require a system for specifically quickly transporting larger quantities of weapons and maybe supplies okay to the troops so from the second world war till the beginning of the 20th century pallets has been used for this one and after that it became as a main element okay in the supply chain uh you know product movements like goods received storage delivery okay so we use it both as a manual as well as automatic means okay so that um, like pallets has to be in good function to function properly and of course you know the throughput should be efficient okay so e-commerce boom also has made some complex operations at the most uh, storage uh, installations so goods are stored not only in the pallets but also in special types of boxes with definite dimensions so pallets no longer have a monopoly okay on being the standard unit load so of course there has been widespread you know component okay uh, like in the industrial sector food sector automotive industries okay in other sectors like retail or maybe e-commerce as well okay so here the orders are smaller and maybe they include one or more few stock keeping units so prioritization has become practically obsolete okay <coughs> so how to prioritize the goods properly okay so prioritization we have two phases one you have to load the material and the other one you have to secure the goods so okay so it's necessary to deposit all the unit loads uniformly and you have to go for stackability so for the general rule maybe you can use small boxes okay but due to their regular shape they can be easily and maybe neatly piled on top of the other okay so when palletizing you have to keep in mind that the weight of the pallet must be evenly distributed not like concentrated only in the center or maybe only at the side okay so otherwise pallet will become deformed okay so that might create a risk for the goods as well as the operators who are involved in the process so the material making up the package okay cannot be you know overhang maybe horizontally or maybe vertically so this might create a problem okay to for what is being stored or maybe transported okay so that represents a severe handicap for the company so this is the st stability of the pallet structure this is the correct one okay and remaining all we what we will see it is the wrong one okay so this is equal to a the the, the dimension the width okay so here if you can see this unevenness it's not correct it is greater than a okay and also this one okay like concentrated on the center or maybe like this so that is also not correct so once a load is actually stacked on the pallet so you have to create a compact structure that is going to have a set of group uh, group goods that is going to remain stable for the entire operations so this is done by applying a transparent film in the stretch wrapping process that is going to protect the goods and of course it is going to bind them together so everything has been done manually but definitely there are automatic solutions also as i told you both traditional as well as automatic practices are there in palletization then we will have the new logistic scenario like warehouses with multiple load units so e-commerce also has led like many installations to replace the traditional practices of pallets okay with boxes 
especially in the fashion sector retailing sector okay so there are still many warehouses where the operations you know still revolve around the palace so the traditional means is still continuing okay so it's a fact that more and more companies are implementing solutions in automatic scenario okay so this makes you know very much important for palletizing to be done much more properly okay so here as i told you palletizing loads will allow for preloads in the accumulation areas or maybe the temporary buffers okay so all automated and maybe semi-automatic installations okay so they go for you know shrink wrapping okay to be done in a more much more appropriate manner so that the goods also doesn't you know overturn or maybe the cause a hindrance to the normal cause of the operations so these are the use of the digital logistics platform okay so platforms has to match the supply and demand and of course they have to bundle and you have to increase the purchasing power and also like services also should be continuous enough so platforms are a place where the data is maybe put in a structured manner okay so the prerequisite for digitization and maybe the integration along the supply chain is like end-to-end -end process okay so companies also can you know uh, keep a closer look keen look on the business analytics and maybe the planning process also so it is all about how you try to efficiently use and manage the platform data okay so all you know the advantages you know of the digital logistic platform promise that digitalization can definitely unlock significant pockets of value across the supply chain so scm is having a greater uh, advantage with the digital logistics platform so what are the uh, you know the opportunities for the digital players in the transport and logistics sector so megan see it's a popular survey uh, uh, scenario okay mechanism okay so mckenzie estimates that the average supply chain has a digitization level of 43 percentage the lowest of the five business areas that the global consultancy firm has actually analyzed okay so that by the mckenzie okay so the transportation market also has already started moving through a digitization everything has been uh, digitized okay and also like everybody is into the new advanced technologies okay so if you go back to the 2019 global freight forwarding report that is actually published by the transport intelligence it found that 14 percentage of the survey shippers have already started using the online forwarding platform so which once again brings to the statistics like we'll have 18.7 percentage of the volumes will be booked online by 2023 so that is the predictability so platforms are naturally the aggregators which actually fit or when we work best in the highly fragmented markets so here we will have uh, the western europe condition as well so the road freight market okay consists of 300,000 carriers ranging from multi-billion euro companies to small owner driven enterprises as well we have some examples like uber freight amazon like several tracking platforms are you know you know utilize you know maximum utilization of taxi as well as retail industries so the goal is to reduce the inefficiencies and maybe increase the vehicle capacity utilization okay so in trucking also like we'll have the platforms will go it for fpl ltl we already discussed about uh, intermodal freight transportation full truck load and less than full truck load segments okay so that is for the first as well as last mile transport so marketplaces also it's going to support the shippers as well as carriers but also uh, we'll have freight forwarders that helps so you know you know better utilization of you know warehouse like uh, trucks planes trains barges ships and reverse cargo for their empty capacity and we'll have some digital solution for the maritime transport so even whenever we say online platform we we are still in the uh, you know the traditional practices as well so in the maritime industry also like the terminals also came up with the online platform offering several services like maybe booking of appointments you know booking of slots you know processing of the payments invoices bills okay so that was established first in bahrain okay it was launched at khalifa bin salman port okay so that was in bahrain and afterwards like uh, the port of rotterdam offers pronto that's an application for the uh, shipping companies, terminal operators and maybe other port stakeholders definitely to manage the tasks during the port call based on the standardized data exchange so that you know the functionalities have further started to develop. Okay. 
so pronto that is by the port of rotterdam said so that it is going to link into this uh, hvcc hamburg vessel coordination center in order to exchange the port call information and then we'll have like a uh, antwerp which invested in nxt port so that's a data platform which is actually offering a large range of port services maybe like container weight data and maybe customs information singapore also came up with kalista so that's an open supply chain platform so which means that audience can also participate in the process okay so which going to invite other ports and of course logistic players to definitely join go beyond the port to capture the value of the end-to-end -end logistics process and the digital challenges uh, uh, we'll have like in next port we'll have flex port okay so the digital provider is going to connect with the digital platform importers exporters trucking companies ocean carriers airlines custom agencies and of course port terminals as well so customers can get their updates like minute by minute updates as well alerts as well okay from the near real-time adjustments okay along the chain in order to keep this logistics commercial and of course the customer requirements and expectations on track so there's we'll have like trade shift so that's a open supplier collaboration platform especially that has been established with the third party apps so this is going to allow companies to manage both direct spending as well as indirect spending okay so platforms also will have like in you know gain a competitive advantage over this increased control okay so we'll try to manage you know the critical business processes maybe like procurement inventory cash flow how you deal with customer relations compliance and of course tax planning as well so why are the digital logistics platform often seen as a threat okay so maybe even the chief uh, financial officers as well can reconcile okay what's transit with what's on the balance sheet that you try to maintain so freight forwarders often see this platforms as a threat okay so we'll have even some platforms like zoom and then we cargo so they are considered as partners okay so they offer digital tools definitely with the ease of the brokers and dispatchers so powers also can benefit and of course they can use their own uh, capacity or maybe they can get access to the assets and infrastructure maybe within or maybe outside their coverage areas especially to fill the gaps where they are beyond their reach okay so companies also can build their own platforms or maybe you can leverage on the other platforms through the tms transport management system okay so if it is set means it is done okay it is easy so bringing a platform to life is a complex undertaking and of course it requires technology and if you build means it's much more easier to use so how can online platforms offer end-to-end -end solutions so we'll platforms if you can see everything is being connected okay so it's a one platform easy to use platform okay so uh, that's where you try to uh, enjoy the advantages of the software okay so you can uh, support in the structured data okay increase the data visibility data transparency enhance the data sets okay make some uh, segmentation approaches as well okay give mailing to the insights and of course you know extract the insights from the data of course standardize the communication streamline the communication of course you go with collaboration through the supply chain management and of course platforms also you'll try to you know digitize the businesses like we'll connect with the available marketplaces and of course like we'll try to make the maximum usage of tools and of course services for offering to the audience okay so the offer includes like document management services and of course root optimization and of course tracking tools as well. okay so then we'll have another you know, the future okay so none of the digital platforms today cover all the nodes across the demand and supply network okay so if you are asking the freight forwarders to subscribe to platforms which means that subscribe to multiple providers paying hefty fees for that subscription still spend a lot of money especially for internal planning internal design scheduling trade management billing systems because we are in the online and we are forced to do it online we are doing it but we do not know the exact scenario okay so the winning forwarders will be those who are able to efficiently integrate towards the whole uh, solution especially keeping the customization and of course legacy integration in mind okay so staying analog is not the option 
so shippers forwarders and of course carriers may find it hard to compete without digitizing the process and leveraging the digital mar marketplaces okay so today's supply chains are all about like open networks with data flowing back and forth okay right so experimenting and collaborating especially with the digital freight platforms might not be worth effort but definitely it's a prerequisite it's a very very important requirement to try to sustain in the fully equipped digital age that's the force that we have